Hey guys, how's it going? It's Chris and welcome to a really, really quick story video that I'm going to try to do off the cuff. I didn't spend any time trying to even remember much of the story. I just remembered, oh yeah, this happened. I want to kind of tell you guys about it. Right, so this story goes back, I mean, years and years ago, a few years ago. I don't exactly remember. It, it was after 2014. It might have been 14 or early 15. I think it was late 14 when this happened, if I can remember correctly. Again, it's all kind of foggy. I didn't want to go out of my way to ask a bunch of people all the details. I just kind of, hey, this happened. So there was this guy, and I'm going to say his name because he's a scumbag, and if he comes after me, I'll fucking shoot him in the head. This guy's name is John. I'm not going to give his last name, but his name is John, and he is a guy that uh, wanted, that was... Um, pseudo friends with my parents for a little bit and he wanted he's like a six foot tall like 50 year old dude who's just like he has like stories to tell up the ass he's like a really annoying motherfucker right uh and as you can tell i'm already kind of annoyed because this guy is just such a scumbag i literally want to stomp his face into the dirt so he ends up uh talking to my parents and uh he needs a place to stay for a little while i think he was coming down from new york or something like that and he was he was out this way and he needed somewhere to stay for like a, a week two weeks max or something like that so my parents are like yeah sure come say bye we got we'll set up a spare bed for you a spare room whatever have you cool cool so he comes by and he seems kind of nice he seems all right and he you know, like i said he's got stories to tell for days he has like all these adventures he talks about he like deals with like fucking paintings or something i don't care and he comes by and that two or so weeks turns into months this dude ends up staying at the house for months now this is at a time when my dad is has been doing very well at not drinking now I, I don't want to say talk shit about my dad but he was going through a lot of stuff back and forth back in the day and he was doing very well at not drinking getting himself on a very good um, straight and narrow line kind of thing and the family was doing very well uh, this guy John comes along and my dad has a friend has a new friend so what happens there is they start drinking together my dad starts getting really desperate for friendship and he starts taking the side of john john's always up late at night he's cooking dinner he's making breakfast he's uh, he's really moved himself right the fuck in huh oh he really does move in because he starts trying to become the dad of the household and none of the kids have liked him since day one my mom doesn't like him but my dad is my best friend he's my new friend we're best buddies so he gets my dad drinking, he's drinking, they're both getting drunk, they're both being fucking assholes. And this guy John decides, I'm the man of the house now. He's wormed his way in here, he's Mr. Tough Shit walking around his PJs and tank top with a half scruffy beard, you know, making fucking eggs and bacon at 7 o'clock in the morning, trying to like, you know, just, and he's, he's, seems like he wants to like, he's just like taking over kind of thing. And my dad's defending him with his shitty attitude, his shitty behavior, he talks back to my mom, talks back to the kids. There was even one point where he pressed Dylan up against the wall because Dylan said something he didn't like. He, I don't remember exactly what happened there. But this was all getting ridiculous because none of us could say a word to this guy without my dad defending him because he had essentially brainwashed my dad into thinking that we were all shitty, that he was the best, and that my dad was in a very vulnerable state uh medication wise and you know fixing himself wise he was just in a influential influential vulnerable state so this guy is like family's mine so essentially we've, we've all had enough we've been trying to tell my parents get him the fuck out of the house we're gonna kill him we're gonna kill him none of us had guns at this point thank god because me and henry and dylan between us one of us would have shot this guy in the head while he slept he was such a degrading piece of shit and he was so bad like he would come out he'd be drunk in the morning and he'd be drunk at night and he was just he had no intentions of leaving none whatsoever he's mooching off of us he's living in our house he's taking over all the yada yada and i remember this one time i got so mad at him because he was just being such a fucking unruly disgusting human being to my mom and to my family and but yeah i'm pretending like he's you know a fucking saint of saints i go outside and his car is parked in the middle of the driveway I take my key to my car, and I go... Straight line, horizontal line, down his entire length of the car. I keyed this fucker's car. Because that was literally all I could do. That was the only retaliation I could get, because if, I, if any of us had acted on him, attacked him... We had no doubt that this guy was a psycho enough to probably have taken a knife or something to defend himself. And he probably, like, if we had gone up and punched him and attacked him, he probably would have killed one of us because he was actually psychotic. And that all came into fruition like a month into it. He was like a literal psychopath, but my dad refused to see it. And 
so I keyed the fuck out of his car because he deserved it. And like I said, I would have done way worse if I could have. I swear to God, if I had my gun right now, I would be in prison for murdering him. One of the three of us would be. So I keyed his car. And then I think the next day, he because that, that day, the reason I did that, we had like a little spike between us. I, I would really get each other's face and I had, I had about had it. And But I know that even if I did something, he, either he would have hurt me or my dad would have defended him. My dad would have hurt me. So it was just like a lose-lose thing. There's nothing I could really do about it. And we tried to get the, we tried to get the police involved and stuff, but he hadn't actually done anything. So, um, which the more he saw us retaliating against him and trying to talk to my dad and stuff, the more ang the angrier he got. So it just got kind of worse. So I keyed his car and then the next day, he, he stops me in the kitchen. He goes, do you know what happened to my car? Like really just like, give me that eye. And this is my response to him. I just kind of like, just kind of like turn and look at him. I, I gave him one of these. And I just walked away to my room. I gave him that, that, that fucking devilish smirk like, yeah. And kind of thing. I was so fucking ready to throw hands with this six foot, 220 pound fucking lope of a human being. I was so ready to take him on with all of these, these little arms. I was going to fucking take him down. I swear I would have fucking gouged his eyes out. I relished at the chance to gouge that man's eyes out. So, and that happened and I didn't get in trouble. I didn't get caught. I told Henry and I told my mom and everyone that like, yeah, I did that. If he's asking, just know that I did that. And they were also proud of me and all this good stuff. So, um, yeah, I keyed somebody's car for a very good reason, and that was the minimum, actually, sorry, that was the maximum I could really do at that time, uh, and that was a period of my life I, I want to forget. Basically, my life from age 12 to, like, 16, I want to forget. It was just a not a good time. Anyway, so, and that's really it, guys. That's a very short story for you. Hopefully you enjoyed, um... And whenever I think of other stories, I'm going to try to write them down. Any kind of past happenings in my life, I'll try to write them down as long as they're not too personally invasive to the point where I disparage somebody in my personal life. Like, I don't want to talk shit about my dad. I've mentioned every time there's a video that has to do with him doing something negative. I love my dad to death, and I have forgiven him for a lot of the stuff that he went through because he went through a lot of stuff, so I forgive him for all this stuff. That thing with John, I can't really entirely forgive him for because he chose essentially a stranger over his family. But again, he was in a vulnerable state, so it's kind of like washed over. Put a napkin on it. We're fucking done with that dinner. So, thank you guys again for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Check out my other stories in the description on the end card. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later.